Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. This year we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of your favorite TV show. Once again, we have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We support them to become more productive, get better yields, and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore what we eat, where we get it, and how we can cook it in cleaner, faster, healthier, and cheaper ways. And at the same time, increase family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice. While also learn from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Dear viewers, I'd like to let you know that all the filming you're about to see was done before the outbreak of the coronavirus in Kenya and Tanzania. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are here in Limuru. And we are revisiting a farmer that we visited last year. And we want to see if our expert's advice did help him. Because here at Shamba Shape Up, we say to know the sweetness of food, you have to taste it. Caro, you're talking about food and we haven't had breakfast yet. Let's go. All Come. right, let's go. And today we are visiting Moses Njiriri. He's married to Susan and they have four children. Ah! ah. ah. Moses! Hi! <laughs> how are you? Fine, thank you. Susan, and hello! Good morning! Yes, sir, how are you? <laughs> huh? Welcome to my home. Yes. Yeah, you are. Give it, give yeah. it. Yeah. 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 All right. We are back. Yeah, welcome. Show us your shamba. Let's go. Okay, right. yeah. let's go. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. So, here we have a lovely looking avocado tree with some very ripe fruits. Yes, looks ready for picking, Caro. Oh yes, there's maize. This looks beautifully planted. Wow, look at this, Caro. Moses has goats. Oh yes, and some sheep too. Moses, you're doing a great job. Thanks. And since last time when we were here, yeah. I can tell you I can see some changes. It seems that you are following the expert advice. Of course, yes, the way you are coming to me now and then, yes. I'm up even pulling my socks. So as when you come, yeah. you meet other things which you which you do live. Yeah. How can we help you pull your socks? Sincerely, there's one problem I have mm -hmm. with my wife. Oh. The kitchen, the way she's doing it. Mm -hmm. She is even uh, crying because of the, of the smoke. Because of the smoke? Oh, yes, oh. in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. You know, we always don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but on that, yes. yeah. leave it to us. Thanks. Yes. yes. I saw a shade. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that, that's a cow shade. Yes. But I didn't see any cows. What are you planning with that? What I'm thinking mm -hmm. is uh, I want to buy a, a one cow mm -hmm. to start with so as I, get, I can be getting milk out of it. Yeah. Um, that's uh, my plants. Even my, uh, my surrounding neighbors. It's good that even if one or two can be assisted, mm -hmm. they can see that Chapa Shape Up is concerned fully with farmers. Ah, yeah, so yes. Nice. We are already to work, Caro. Yes. And we have very little time. As usual, you know how of we course, do it. Yeah, of course, yeah. So yes. you let us go get prepared and get to work. Thanks. Yes. See you later. We'll see you later. Bye. All right. Okay. Bye, bye. Bye. All right. Bye. 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 Now, on this farm, we are not only bringing experts to help our farmer, we are also asking our farmer for help as well. Moses has been growing maize since 1994 and even runs training courses for local farmers. In this area, the maize has already started to grow and it's almost at knee high. So, we wanted to get some advice from Moses on top dressing and why it's so important. But first, I wanted Moses to tell us more about seed selection. Why should farmers use certified seeds? Because the final product will be excellent. Mm -hmm. Because they are seeds from the people from Cali, they have certified those seeds. Yes. So the outcome ah. will be excellent. You are assured of a healthy harvest. Yes. How many seeds did you put in one hole? Since here, sometimes I put about two or three. Mm -hmm. Then before top dressing, yes. I remove the weak one. So some of them are insurance, just in case of something. Of course, wrong. of course, yes. Aha. Yeah. Now top dressing. Yes. You do top dress your maize, don't you? I do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why do you top dress? It's to boost them, uh -huh. so as they can uh, produce more uh -huh. without any stress. 
Okay, show us how you do top dressing. Uh, this is my top dressing fertilizer. This is here. Mm -hmm. I mix at least a spoonful. Okay, then what do you then do? Then I start uh, uh, putting it near the roots, mm -hmm. but not fully in the roots. Mm -hmm. Like that. Like that. After doing so, mm. uh, you come and take the fork. Mm -hmm. You you mass it to the soil. Like that. It is mixed up. So as it's not direct from the sun, when it rains, it will go straight to the roots. And that is how it does. You see, you can't get, you can't see any fertilizer here. Yes. 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 Yeah. Then after you do that, you wait for the rain. I wait for the rain. Mm -hmm. When the rain comes, it's just weeding once and then the mist is ready. Mm -hmm. to be consumed. Okay. Yeah. Top dressing is when you top up fertilizer to your crop a few weeks after planting. It's a great way to boost your crop's health as it grows and thereby increase its yield. But timing is critical. Apply the fertilizer when the crop is at knee high as it is here. But remember, it's really important that the fertilizer does not directly touch the crop. One way to do this is by digging a small trench alongside the crop about 15 centimeters away from the plant. Then spread 20 grams of fertilizer per meter along the trench. If the maize is not planted in straight lines, you can also dig a trench around the crop when the maize is knee high. Put 10 grams of the top dressing fertilizer inside the trench. That's about a bottle top full. Use CAN or urea as fertilizer or a specialist top dressing fertilizer from a major manufacturer. After applying the fertilizer, cover the trench with soil. What message do you like to give farmers about top dressing? Most of the farmers does not do top dressing to their maize. And that is why you see the difference between my maize and my surrounding farmers. Yes. But I would like them to know that if you do top dressing to your crop, mm. it will do more. You get a good you harvest. Go, you get a good harvest. Ah. Yes. Excellent. Thanks. Okay. Good, let's continue top dressing. Then. Okay, yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Moses is an expert at farming maize, but when it comes to cows, he's just a beginner and he wants to start a dairy business next year. So we've invited John Karaoke from Coopers to come and give us some expert advice. Karaoke is visiting Grace, Moses's neighbor. Grace keeps dairy cows and she wants some advice on milking. So, we've decided to help both farmers by asking Karaoke to take a look at the cows on Grace's farm and bringing Moses along to listen in. This way, we can help Grace and Moses too. So, uh, if I can ask Grace, how long have you kept your cows? Two years. Two years now. Mm. And uh, do they produce milk? Yeah. Uh, how many liters per day? Mm, approximately like 48, 48 kilos. Per day? Mm. That's a lot of milk. They can do better. Mm -hmm. There are things that I would like to pinpoint mm -hmm. on her management. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, number one, yeah. the shed was very dirty. Mm -hmm. The sleeping area yeah. and the milking area. When the cows are sleeping in that area, they are predisposed to getting mastitis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What causes mastitis? Uh, mastitis is brought about by two aspects. Number one, poor milking techniques. Number two is now the hygiene of your milking area and of the sleeping area. What is the solution? Maintain cleanliness and you disinfect. Disinfecting has two key steps. First, the cow shed needs to be cleaned. And then second, the cow must be cleaned too. So first, let's look at the cow shed. Just before you get to your cow shed, you come with a lot of germs from the shamba, from the neighbors. You need to disinfect your feet. You need to disinfect your gum boots. So you need to make a good foot bath and you put cuparside. Okay. Yeah. Even at the entrance, any car coming in, there is a dower to put in. That is number one. Number two, use cuparside in your sleeping area and the milking area to wash the floor. This one will kill all the bacteria in the shed all the viruses and all the mycoplasmas, mm -hmm. and the disease causing mastitis in your milking para. 
So, to get rid of diseases like mastitis, add a disinfectant foot bath at the entrance to the cow shed. Fill with 100 ml of cooperside in 10 liters of water. Replace every two weeks. Then spray both the cow's sleeping area and the milking area every week. Mix 25 ml of cooperside in a 10 liter knapsack. Don't worry, when diluted, Cooperside is not toxic and is safe for animals. Now the shed is clean. Now you come again to the cow. The technique of milking the cow. Start wash the udder with warm water. Possibly one cow takes about four and a half liters of lukewarm water to wash the udder. And that water, you just don't wash it. You mix with 15 ml of mustard. You wash the udder and wash the teats. That is before milking. You wipe the udder dry. Before milking, wash the cow's udder. Mix 15 milliliters of mastrite in around four and a half liters of warm water. And remember, each cow's udder should be washed and dried using separate towels. Now we come to milking. When we start milking, you don't just milk bare hand. You need to use Cooper's milking salve. Oh. This will soften the teats. If there are some mild woods or chaps, it will heal. It will soothe for the cow. Then you start milking. Once you are through with milking, you get mastrite. We have it here. Use a teat deep cup. Okay, I've never seen this. This one you mix mastrite and water in a ratio of one is to one. Then you teat deep and leave it there up to the next milking. That will give your teeth protection for up to 12 hours. No germs can get around the teeth. Now, when milking, use a milking salve to soften and heal the teeth. Then after milking, use a teeth deep cup filled with equal amounts of mastrite and water to make sure no diseases can enter the teeth. Yes. You know, in the end of the day, I having a cow, the important side of it yes. is milking and the production. True. And it's good that myself, mm -hmm. now I'm educated enough. Yes. So that when I start mine, yeah. there's no sotica. Welcome to this week's update on the desert locust. The desert locust is a very serious pest. Locust adults can eat their own weight every day. There are three groups of locusts you should look out for. The young locust is black and yellow and cannot fly. They move in big groups called bands, like this. The young adult locust is red or pink and looks like this. The mature locusts are yellow and look like this. Be careful not to confuse locusts with grasshoppers. Locusts usually move in groups of hundreds and have short antennas. Grasshoppers are usually all alone. The adult grasshopper has long antennae and long legs to help them jump. Grasshoppers are not a problem. These are the areas that are currently affected by desert locusts in Kenya. The high density areas in red show where loss of locusts have been reported. Medium density areas in orange show where some locusts have been reported. And there is some risk of the locusts damaging crops now and it could get worse. And the low density areas in yellow is where you have low risk of locust attacks. The threat of locust is very high in northern and some central counties. Turkana and Marsabit have a lot of locusts and are at a very high risk. Samburu, Garissa and Tana River are also at a high risk. Swarms of locusts have also been spotted in Mandera, Wajir, Isiolo, Tharakanithi, Baringo, and West Pokot. The desert locusts are like a fire. Local authorities have teams that can spray the locusts with special chemicals that will control them. It is very important that you get in touch with our hotline to tell us whether you have or have not seen locusts in your area. Tell us if you have seen the yellow and black hoppers, the pink young adult locust, or the yellow mature locust. Send the word locust to 21606 and we will get in touch with you. Ah, well, Carol. Yes, Tony? What do you think of that? You know, every time we revisit a shamba and you find the farmer has climbed the ladder, there's this kind of feeling that you have. You know, uh, like... It's um, called joy. joy. That is the word I'm looking yes. for. Yes. Joy. Yes. And a feeling of satisfaction learning that our farmers are following the expert advice and they are willing to make changes and adapt. And we hope they continue doing that. That's what we pray for. Oh, 
now I know what I, what I was feeling. Yes. Something, something angelic. It makes you feel like you're floating in paradise. It's like some, some heavy, something lifting maybe, you up into maybe soaring. Maybe that's and... going way too over the top. But um, well, there's still more to come right after the break. And welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. We are in Deya, Kiambu County, and we are visiting Moses Njiriri. So, no time to waste. Let's get back to work. <laughs> Farmers are sending us many questions through Aishamba to know more about COVID-19 and how to cope even as they do their farming. Our today's subject is COVID-19. And we are very lucky today to have in our studio Dr. Mark Hawken and Doris Naitore, a health worker. Welcome. And I'm going straight to the first question, and this is for you, Dr. Mark. And it's coming from Joyce from Nairobi, who wants to know, what is the difference between coronavirus and COVID-19? Yes, that's a very good question, Tony. Uh, it can be a bit confusing, but corona is the virus. So we have coronavirus, and then we have the disease that's caused by the virus, it's known as COVID-19. Okay. Now, Doris, Matthew from Kisumu is currently living in Kibra. And Matthew wants to know what can he do to make sure that he doesn't contract coronavirus? You can protect yourself even in an overcrowded place like Kibra by social distancing. Ensure that each and everyone within your household has a mask especially when they interact with the rest of the community. Ensure that you are washing your hands with running water at least every one hour. Now, Doc, how do I know if I've got coronavirus? Coronavirus infection or COVID-19 is usually uh, a flu-like illness. So um, the main symptoms are fever uh, and cough. Um, and if that uh, infection it becomes worse, you may even get some shortness of, of breath. Uh, the other symptoms that are less common are, are flu-like symptoms like muscle aches, um, sore throat, headache, um, and even, uh, even diarrhea. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Mark Hawken, and thank you, Doris Naitore, and uh, we hope to see you soon, and we'll see you next time on Shamba Shape Pub's Q&A. If you have any questions or concerns you'd like answered about COVID-19 or coronavirus, please get in touch with us on iShamba by texting us on 21606. Now it's time for our final story, a special report on quick, cheap, smoke-free cooking using an electric pressure cooker. Susan cooks most of her meals in her outside kitchen using wood. It's not only quite expensive, but there's always the risk of the fire getting out of control and spreading, of burns to the skin or of accidents when children are nearby. Also, smoke from the fire damages the lungs. It's one of the biggest killers of women and children in Africa. So, we've invited Wairimo Muturi, also known as Nemo's Kitchen on social media. She's a cooking blogger. Let's see if she can help. How are you? Um, what are you cooking for us today? Today we're going to pick ugari. Managu. Okay. How long will it take? It will take a long time because this is going to be a long time. It will be a long time. It will be a long time. Wow. At the shopping center, mm. how much do they sell the firewood and how do they measure the amount of firewood? Wanapima na kutoka miambiri. Kwa hivyo nitachukua ya elfu moja. Itaenda wiki moja ya elfu moja. Na hiyo ni kupima. Would you say there are any health implications from the smoke? Iko sana. Imoshi, kingia kwa kifua ni kama mwenye nafuta sigara. Ah. Macho inaanza kulia hata mimi kukohoa <coughs> na kufanya mm, makamasi see. moshi ni mingi kabisa ufikirie nimefuta mbagi eh. vile macho iko nyekundu <laughs> Today I want to introduce you to a new way of cooking 
I have a surprise for you waiting at the other house. Wow. Yes. Let's go and see it. Okay. Okay. Now, while Susan is away from the outside kitchen, we are going to see if we can shape up her kitchen a little. Shamba Shape Up's expert builder, Karis, is getting to work. Be sure a treat is in store. But first, Moses and I have been waiting to find out what Susan thinks of a new, clean, safe, and low-cost cooking stove. Surprise! Wow! Yes! yes. What do you <laughs> think? <laughs> now, today I have brought you a pressure cooker. Mm. It's an electric pressure cooker. Mm. It will help you when you're cooking. It saves you time, money, and even from those tears that are caused by the smoke from the firewood. Mm -hmm. So how does this uh, pressure cooker work? It's actually very simple. You connect it to the power, and once you connect it to the power, it has a control panel here that guides you and shows you what you want to cook. If you want to cook hitheri, it's here. If you want to cook meat, it's here. It has safety measures to protect you while using the pressure cooker. It has a plastic lid. It's coated, but inside it's stainless steel. When you touch the pressure cooker while it's cooking, you do not get burnt. With the pressure cooker, you can cook absolutely anything. You're not limited to anything that is listed here. For the ugali, you will cook it when the lid is open under uh, menu number five, which is saute. For the nguashe, it has a metal stand where you can steam your nguashe, ndoma. Yeah. So Warimo, you're trying to say that this pressure cooker is multi-purpose. Yes, multi It can cook basically almost everything. Yes. yes wow. Yes. Is this going to make her life any easier, any better? It cooks fast. It's very portable. You do not need to be at a specific point. Okay. How it? much will it cost me to cook? How much is your cost? One thousand. One thousand? One thousand for one, for one week. week. Yeah. Wow. That's expensive. With the pressure cooker, it costs roughly about 10 shillings to 12 shillings a meal. That amounts to about 200 bob a yes, week? Yes, that, that amounts to 200 bob a week. Mm -hmm. So you see, it ends up saving you a lot. You've heard it from our expert. Cooking most of your meals with the pressure cooker for a whole week will cost you less than 200 shillings. Mama over here spends a thousand shillings every week on firewood for her cooking. That means she could save up to 800 shillings using the pressure cooker. To find out if the electric pressure cooker really is as cheap as it seems, we did a test in Nairobi to find out the cheapest way of boiling yellow beans. The typical cost of boiling 500 grams of beans with charcoal came to 36 shillings. To cook with an electric hot plate cost 35 shillings. To cook with gas or LPG cost 34 shillings. And cooking with kerosene cost 25 shillings. But cooking the beans with the electric pressure cooker cost just 5 shillings. Okay, I think Moses and Susan are now convinced. So, let's start cooking. I'm going to set this to sauté. To sauté, it means kukaranga. Yes. Now, I'll start by cutting the onion. So, I'm just going to throw it in. Now, we will come to the tomatoes. Our pot is hot. I'm going to add some cooking oil. Thank you. We're going to add our tomatoes. Now, we just wait for everything to cook for like 10 minutes only before I can add the spices and the dango. I'm going to add the spices, turmeric, just one tablespoon, some paprika, one tablespoon, salt, some black pepper, a quarter teaspoon. Yeah? I'm just going to give it a mix, a light mix. Now we're going to add in our dengue. After we've given it a good mix, we're going to add a cup of water. This is the cup that came with the pressure cooker. And now the final step. We close the pressure cooker and let the food cook. Always ensure that this and this align. And when they align, you hear that melody. 
the seal you ensure it's under the lock seal we have done the saute um, you can cancel it you don't have to wait for the remaining minutes okay. uh, now we are going to input our settings the dengu takes 40 minutes to cook so I'm going to input 40 minutes here uh, we can we can go and do anything right now continue with our work now after the 40 minutes the pressure cooker will beep and once it beeps it means our food is ready wow so now we have some time on our hands of course yes. let's prepare the plates and get ready to eat while we wait for the food to cook caris has been busy making shelves keeping pots and pans off the floor avoids contamination from animals coming in as they could easily spread disease and cause illness so it's important susan has some places to keep her cooking items off the floor now let's get back and see what's happening with the cooking now our food is ready yeah. as you can see the timer is already over and it's keeping our food warm now the pressure has re been released you cannot open the pressure cooker when the pin is raised so let's see the pin is down we can open it smells good yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. very good it's yeah, so, very appetizing so, yeah. So I'm just going to give this a quick stir. As you can see the water is already absorbed by the ndengus. You can add a little bit water if you want some soup in your ndengus. Or you can just leave it as is. As you can see, there is the result. Let's test test it. Oh, to test it. Yeah, the way it is, yeah. Mm, mm. yeah. We are very hungry. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no mm. time of adding other water. Mm. Yeah. Don't put a lot, it will be finished. <laughs> Can't it. Mm. So sweet. Very sweet. Wow. So that's a thumbs up for the food. And here is the kitchen with the shelves all finished. Wow. Looking good. Let's see what Mama thinks. Wonderful way. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Mungu ambariki. Asante. Ambariki. Asante. Mbariki. <laughs> With all the space Susan has on the floor, it will be so much easier to avoid any accidents and everything will remain clean and tidy. Now that's another thumbs up. Nice work, everyone. <sighs> wow. Wow. Good work. What a day. Sincere, the day was perfect. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I can see she's full of smiles <laughs> yeah. and joy. And very happiness. happy. The, the swelling of the eyes of my wife yes. is over. If they are happy, we are all happy. Yes. Also, yeah. our work here yes. is it's done. done. Yeah. And, and we'll, we'll see you in the, the next Shamba. Shamba.